Okay, so this is part three. So let's take our file, same as, file, same as. Now, for future reference, guys, I'm going to make my, guys, I'm going to make my video short and sweet and to the point. This way, you don't have to basically scroll through the video to get to the content. So my videos will be properly titled. So you can just go to those little snippets of videos. Therefore, these videos can be like two or three minutes long a piece. Five at the most. I want to keep my videos less than five minutes. Preferably two to three minutes to just share the concepts with you. Okay, so let's stylize this HTML. This, I'm sorry, let's stylize A tag, which of course is anchor tag. Anchor tag, so if you double click this word here and you go to your code, you'll simply see that that's an anchor tag. Right, and that anchor tag is referencing the pound symbol. Now, for those of you that are new to this, okay, let's think about this in a very practical way. I teach real world production techniques. The same techniques I use to build sometimes six figure websites, I build at least one of those every uh, week to six weeks. I build a six figure website using the same techniques I'm sharing with you guys. So if it works for me, it worked for you. So by putting in the pound symbol, so as an example, if you want to make this a hyperlink, put in the pound symbol. Now I just want to be very clear about this. If you put anything but the pound symbol, it's going to go to a page with that name. Now let's understand something. From a design standpoint, we're not there yet. This is not a final page. This is a V for version page. It's not the final page. Therefore, the client or boss or whoever should not be looking at other pages because it means, okay, the design of this page. Just want to be very clear about that, okay? So let's stylize this tag. This tag doesn't have a CSS rule, so in order to affect the tag, we're going to select the tag. So select the tag and make a rule. Now, in this particular case, you have to follow this layout here. This is the A tag inside the list item, inside the unordered list, inside the nav, HTML5 nav tag. So we have to follow that exactly, okay? So let's just do this, okay? Let's make this, first of all, let's make the height of each box be 30 pixels high. Actually, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. I just skipped the point. I can't believe I did this. We need to, I don't want these dots here. My mistake on this. I want to get rid of these dots, which is part of the unordered list. So I select the tag. In order to affect the tag, I need to select the tag. So I'm going to come over here and make a rule for the UL, which stands for unordered list. So we're going to hit OK. Then, based on these choices, again, if you, anything about my teaching, guys, I get you to think the way the software thinks. Based on these choices, this is my dialog box. These are my choices. Based on these choices, we want to change the list. We don't want to have these dots, so we change our list type for the UL tag, which stands for unordered list, to none. Okay, now the dots are gone. Make a change, save a change. So now let's do the anchor tag. Select the tag, make a rule in order to affect the tag. We need to select the tag. Okay. So let's make the box height of each of each box, the about, the products, the price. Let's make each box 30 pixels high. Therefore, it will vertically put the type in the center, up and down in center, not left and right center. We don't want to have these underlines circa 1995, so we're going to say none. We do want this to be capitalized, so we're going to make this capitalized. We are going to put this in a the opposite color of this color here. So we're going to make our type white. We're going to make our background color opposite of this color. So how can I do that? Well, in order to affect the color, we need to select the color. We click here on our swatch and we click right here. Now again, I'm working on Macintosh. The Windows interface for color management is slightly different. I'm going to click the color wheel here and if this is where the color lives, then this is the color's opposite. So I'm going to make it a darker first of the opposite color. Now, important step here, if I hit the apply option, watch what happens. Okay, if this is exactly what I told it to happen. So for those of you that get frustrated by this and go, well, I'm going to go into Photoshop and make buttons. Well, first of all, that's a bad idea because images are not search engine friendly. You want to stay with images as much as possible, especially for navigation buttons. With CSS3, we can do gradients, drop shadows, rounded corners, which I have tutorial videos on this. 
So based on these choices right now by default, what's happening here, it's doing exactly what we told it to do. It's giving the background color of the type because the type is a line of type. So category of block by default is a line of type and it's being displayed as a line of type. This is what it's defaulting to. It's defaulting to this, so it's doing exactly what we told it to do. That's not what we wanted to do. So what the software does and what you think it's going to do are two different things, guys. The software will only do what it was programmed to do. By default, it's a line of type. We need to make this a block of type. So if I make the A tag a block of type that's going to have a height of 30 pixels, and I don't want the type smashing up against the left here, so I'm going to deselect padding. I'm going to go to the left of the padding and put in, say, 10 pixels to the left. So now, when I hit the Apply option, I have four separate boxes. Simply done. I didn't have to go into Photoshop, Illustrator, or Fireworks to do that. It's done right inside the program. So it's going to be the width of the nav tag minus its padding. That's why it's this. That's why you have padding out here. So we're going to go to the margin space at the bottom of the margin. We're going to set each box by 10 pixels. Okay. Make a change. Save a change. All right. So let's do the hover tag. So I select the tag. In order to affect the tag, I select the tag. For those of you that are new to this, the hover tag is when you hover over the button, over, over the A tag. So I select the tag and make a rule. Now, this is something you have to do from scratch. We're going to make this less specific. We're going to have A tag. A tag colon H-O-V-E-R. Hover as in helicopter hover, not hoover as in vacuum hoover. So we're going to simply make this background color here. As soon as my computer stops spinning here, we're going to make this a darker version of blue. So how do I do that? Well, I select the color. And I come over here to the right, and I simply make a darker version. So I just slide this guy down. Now it becomes darker. So that's going to happen when I hover. Make a change. Save a change. Now the hover, you can't see the hover tag, which is a pseudo class here. Now this information, let's do some housekeeping here. This, con this the CSS rules under the tab section. Always want to organize your CSS rules. Make a change, save a change. So this, this hover tag cannot be seen unless I either go to publish to my server or go to live view. If I go to live view, I'm sorry, I said live view my live code. I make that mistake quite a bit, just not paying attention. If I go to live view and move my cursor, there is my hover tag. Okay, very, very, very well. Very well, very well done here. Okay, so save the changes and we'll continue building in the very next video. I swear to you, we'll do SSI.